Hello students. Uh, in today's video, we will discuss pathophysiology and complications of uh, one of the inflammatory bowel disease that is ulcerative colitis. So now let's first define inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease is characterized by chronic inflammation of gastrointestinal tract. There is inflammation of the wall of gastrointestinal tract. Now wall of gastrointestinal tract as we know is made up of four main layers. In the most of the mucosa, below mucosa is a submucosa and the below submucosa is a muscle layer and the outermost is the serosa. Now inflammatory bowel disease includes two diseases namely ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Today we are going to discuss ulcerative colitis. Now ulcerative colitis is a chronic inflammatory disease of mucosa and submucosa of colon that is of the large intestine. Now the disease starts from the rectum that is the inflammation starts from the rectum and it extends proximally in a continuous manner and over a period of time, it extends throughout the entire colon. That is the entire wall of colon or the large intestine over a period of time becomes inflamed. Inflammation can further progress to ulceration of colonic mucosa and submucosa. And that is why uh, the disease is termed as ulcerative colitis. That is Inflammation is followed by ulceration. Therefore, there is ulceration of the inflamed colon. Now, let's understand clinical course of ulcerative colitis. Now, clinical course of ulcerative colitis is usually characterized by relapses that alternate with the period of remission. That is alternate periods of increase in symptoms to improvement in symptoms. So, ulcerative colitis is a chronic relapsing disease. It exhibits periods of exacerbation that is increase in symptoms to remission that is improvement in symptoms and relapses occurs, relapse can occur after an asymptomatic interval of months, years or decades that is recurrence or relapse can occur after an, after an asymptomatic interval of months, years or decades. Now, uh, let's see to the classification of ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis is classified on the basis of severity. Now, uh, first it is uh, termed as a proctitis. Now, in proctitis, the inflammation is limited to the rectum. Uh, secondly, it is termed as distal or left-sided colitis where the mucosal inflammation extends from the rectum proximally up to the splenic flexor. And third, Thirdly, it is termed as pancolitis, where the inflammation spreads throughout the entire colon. And here we find that the normal uh, hostile markings, uh, which are uh, caused due to the folds of the mucosa of colon, disappear. And the colon looks like a smooth tube. That means there is a tubularization of the colon. Uh, now let's uh, discuss pathophysiology of ulcerative colitis. Now this is the figure that shows how the wall of rectum and colon they first get inflamed and further how inflammation leads to ulceration. Now this is the intestinal lumen and this is the wall of the colon. Now innermost mucosal epithelium is protected by the mucinous layer that is, that is by the layer of mucus. Now this uh, mucinous layer it protects the epithelial cells it regulates the tight junctions between the epithelial cells. Now below the epithelium is the lamina propria, then below that is the muscularis mucosa and the associated intestinal blood vessels. Now in ulcerative colitis, there, there is impaired synthesis of mucinous layer. As it is clear from the diagram, this mucinous layer or the mucus layer, it becomes thick. Uh, it becomes thin. Uh, there is impairment of the mucinous layer. And because of the thinning of this mucinous layer, now it is unable to protect the epithelial cells. So this causes increased in the intestinal permeability and there is defective regulation of the tight junctions. These tight junctions become loose because of the impaired or the thinning of the mucinous layer. Now very important, ulcerative colitis is characterized by dysfunctional host immune response. Uh, there is abnormal interaction between the gut microflora and the 
body's immune system very important to understand this that because of the dysfunctional a host immune response there is abnormal interaction between the gut microflora and the immune system of the body and because of the increased permeability these antigens they enter they invade the intestinal uh, cells they reach the lamina propria and these antigen they stimulate the immune system of the body that causes the release of uh, pro inflammatory mediators these pro inflammatory mediators or the cytokines uh, which are shown here in the green color they cause inflammation uh, this inflammation perpetuates it uh, continue indefinitely it causes first inflammation of the uh, wall of colon and rectum followed by this there is ulceration of the wall of colon and rectum so let's see how it happens because of the increased permeability uh, because of the defective uh, uh, because of uh, this defective uh, because of the defect in these tight junctions because the tight junctions they become loose these antigens or the gut microbes they enter lamina propria they are processed by the antigen pre antigen presenting cells that is they are processed by the dendritic cells and the macrophages now these dendritic cells and the macrophages they produce a very uh, strong uh, inflammatory mediator that is the tumor necrotic factor now these antigens which are shown here in the red color they are processed by the macrophages they are processed by the dendritic cells and uh, these antigens are presented to the t cells they are presented to the cd4 t cells now these cd4 positive t cells they further produce tumor necrotic factor and they also produce pro inflammatory cytokine that is interleukin 12 and interleukin 4 interleukin 12 further activates uh, t helper 1 cells and interleukin 4 uh, and interleukin 4 further activates uh, t helper cell 2 now t helper cell 1 produce uh, pro inflammatory mediators like uh, interferon gamma whereas t helper 2 cells they produce inflammatory mediators like interleukin 13 now apart from this natural killer cells they also produce large number of uh, cytokines like interleukin 13 interleukin 4 interleukin 5 and all these inflammatory mediators or the cytokines they are responsible for producing inflammation in the wall of rectum and colon now apart from this leukocytes uh, which are present in the intestinal blood vessels they also migrate to the lamina propria they also uh, gets uh, uh, they also move uh, towards uh, uh, this mucosa and uh, this results in the am amplification of inflammatory response now here very important to understand that uh, tissue uh, that tumor necrotic factor alpha and interleukin 13 they play a major role in the pathogenesis of ulcerative colitis now this uh, tumor necrotic factor alpha it further activates macrophages macrophages further produce tumor necrotic factor now apart from this this tumor necrotic factor this is also responsible for the recruitment of leukocytes it is also responsible for increased uh, intestinal permeability and thus this results in uh, uh, inflammation the inflammation perpetuates and it continue indefinitely now interleukin 13 also plays a very important role uh, it uh, uh, this uh, interleukin 13 it also increases intestinal permeability so this is how a uh, dysfunctional immune host response leads to the generation of large number of pro-inflammatory cytokines which first cause inflammation of the wall of rectum and colon and further there is ulceration of the wall of the rectum and colon now talking about the epidemiology of uh, ulcerative colitis uh, as far as the geography is concerned uh, north america and northern europe exhibit highest incidence and prevalence rates of uh, ulcerative colitis now ulcerative colitis shows uh, by model pattern of incidence main onset peak uh, is observed between uh, 15 to 30 years of age whereas a second smaller peak is observed between 50 and 70 years of age uh, there is no preference regarding uh, the sex now 
talking about the genetic factors family history of inflammatory bowel disease is the most important risk factor and uh, risk is high in first degree relatives now ashkenazi jews have a rate of ulcerative colitis that is three to five times higher than other ethnic groups which shows a uh, genetic link of the disease now talking about the environmental uh, factors ulcerative colitis is higher in developed than in developing countries and higher in urban than in rural areas now improved sanitization uh, in the developed countries uh, might prevent maturation of uh, uh, immune system which could result in ulcerative colitis now smoking has been found to be protective in ulcerative colitis and apart from this previous acute intestinal infections can make changes in gut flora triggering ulcerative colitis in genetically predisposed individual now the disease is idiopathic uh, the exact cause of ulcerative colitis is not known but immune component ap appears to be the most important uh, factor contributing to its uh, pathogenesis as we have already discussed while discussing the pathophysiology of ulcerative colitis now talking about the symptoms of uh, ulcerative colitis uh, hematochezia that is blood in the stools bloody mucopurulent uh, diarrhea uh, then tenesmus that is a fecal urgency abdominal pain and cramps fever and or weight loss now characteristic features of ulcerative colitis ulcerative colitis uh, is found to be restricted to colon and rectum and inflammation is confined to the innermost lining of colon and rectum that is a mucosa and submucosa now this inflammation extends proximally in a continuous manner from the rectum to colon that means the first the inflammation takes place in the wall of rectum and from there it extends proximally and over a period of time this uh, inflammation spreads throughout the uh, wall of colon now inflammatory surface exhibit extensive broad base ulcers so here it's a very important characteristic that ulcers are broad base in ulcerative colitis while in crohn's disease they are sharp deep knife like serpentine uh, ulcers now a uh, very important another characteristic wherever uh, the mucosa regenerates after inflammation it bulges into the colonic lumen as pseudopolyps so isolated surface of regenerating mucosa bulge into the lumen as small elevation called as pseudopolyps and chronic inflammation leads to mucosal atrophy colon loses its folds that is the hostel markings Uh, because of the chronic inflammation uh, the colon loses its uh, hostel markings and it becomes like a small uh, like a smooth tube like structure so the colon becomes like a smooth tube that is there is tubularization of the colon now complications of ulcerative colitis now as we have already discussed that in ulcerative colitis the main uh, problem is the chronic inflammation chronic inflammation of rectum and colon which over a period of time results in ulcers now uh, further to this there can be perforation or formation of holes in the wall of colon so perforation of colon is a complication of ulcerative colitis then uh, second uh, complication is the toxic megacolon now because of the chronic inflammation colon loses its muscle tone and the colon uh, completely dilates so that results in the toxic megacolon and uh, there can be development of colon cancer so this is in brief on pathophysiology uh, symptoms and uh, complications of uh, ulcerative colitis now if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video thanks for watching this video